Today we've got the flight review on the Freewing A10 280mm. Let's take a look at some of the equipment today and an overall view of the plane. Overall first look at this plane you can tell it's got a lot of bits and pieces, a lot of scale. There's some add-ons with bombs and missiles that you can put on this one that it comes with. I personally like to fly it clean and take those off for how it flies and also get a little bit better flight time. This one's got the upgraded 1920 KV 80 millimeter free wing in runners. So this is the system that used to come in the MiG-29, gives a little bit more power. We've also got the 5280 RC whistles in the back. Really sounds cool. You all get to hear it on the flight review flight for today. And let's take a look at the equipment that we've got on the inside. We're rolling with two 6S 5300 SMC LIHVs, an AR8360T, and we've got a satellite receiver in the front. So with the two antennas on the 8360T and then the remote receiver up front should have nice connectivity, even having a lot of battery and stuff in the compartment. On the setup, I've got all the specs and layout down in the description. So I'll have low and high AS3X BD tune rates. I also have the CG that we're running. And on the CG, that's a neutral setup flying. Something I want to note on that is that is probably the most nose heavy to fly neutral I've seen on a plane yet. So you know, on your maiden flight or something, if you're going by that 78 millimeters from the factory, it's going to be very nose heavy. Another thing that we did that we took out to make it fly better, there's no elevator mix on this one. It calls for down in the book. And on top of that, we, between moving the batteries back and not putting the down elevator in there, it doesn't put all that weight on the front nose. So when you touch down at the proper speed, it should plant the nose and not bounce. So we've talked about the setup and everything about for today's flight. Let's go ahead and get this A-10 in the air and put it through the paces. Like 50% power, lifts out with no problem. Normally I'll go full throttle. Get off the runway a little bit faster speed, however this plane got a lot of power. Bring it around here, we got a little bit of crosswind, a little bit of wind down the runway. I'm gonna pull the power back, and one thing you'll notice about this A-10, it really flies. I'm on about 20%. It sounds like a lot more than that, because I've got those 5280 whistles in the back. So this is completely power off. Let the nose come down. So they come down to the turn, still power off. I'm going to go towards the field a little bit. So it's got quite a bit of glide on it. Bring it back around. And I'm really just flying 50 to 60% throttle. I'm going to go up into a climb. I'm going to roll it over. Bring it back down, and when you got the CG ride on this plane, watch, I'll put it at a little bit of an angle. It'll just hold that attitude all the way in. You'll notice the nose stays centered around the turns. I'm flying in medium rates across the board. So this time we're going to bring it around to a low path. We're going to completely power off again. Big straight wing, it just cruises for a long time. Now this next time we come in, see I'm getting up in the power, get around that turn. Next time we're gonna bring it around, go across the field, get the heat check in, post flight review. We'll have a top speed results. Bring it up, do an Immelman to bring it back, and you see it just launches into that climb. Those little whistles, they really hum on the climb. 
so we're gonna get a few touch and goes in here and do a couple of landings. So let's first bring it around, do a gear check. Actually, we're gonna do a little aileron roll right here. Those real tight. And we're gonna bring it in. I'll let y'all see the gear come down. Gear down. So it's got the little nose gear door that comes down. And then the gears come down together. Got the nose light on it. So we're gonna go ahead and put the full flaps down. We got full flaps in, gonna slow it down a little bit. Land and touch and go. We're gonna pull the power back to about 20%. Keep the nose down. And I'm actually gonna go full power off. She wants to drop down a little bit. We're gonna have low power back. Control the descent rate, slow it down. Get it down and take back off. And one thing you want to be careful on, you probably noticed a little bit right there. Even when you have the CG right on this plane, when you're going slow with the flaps like that, if you feed too much power in at one time, it wants to kind of push the nose down a little bit more aggressive. Land and touch and go. So you want to hold that nose up and keep your speed going. You can see I added the power in a little bit. So right here we're power off. We're going to glide around the turn. We got a little bit of crosswind. You see it pushing it sideways. So we're a little higher this time. However, we'll let it sink down. As it sinks down, we'll add the power. And that's what happens when you have the attitude and the power set just right. It's going to sit down. You notice that the nose didn't try to push down that time. And also we carried a little more speed. So a great overall flying bird. You can sit here and fly this plane for a long period of time doing touch and goes. Um, however, you know, that's one of the benefits of having twin 80 with a lot of power in that straight wing is you can literally sit here and touch and go all day. So we're gonna do one more touch and go and then we'll try to do a full stop, see if we can't get two more good landings like that one in here. So right now I'm adding a little bit of power because it's slowing down. You can see it brings it right down to the runway. You just hold it off, let it sit down. Really gentle flying bird. Good size wingspan. Flies a lot easier than you would think for something this size. So great flying airplane and you know one of the best things to do touch good. Landing full stop. So we're gonna bring in for the last one. We got two good ones right there. Let's see if we can't bring this one in and call it a day. We're gonna bring it around. We're a little bit further out. I'm gonna go power off. Let it slow down just a little bit. We're going to get over the trees. We're going to have a little more power. We're starting to slow down. We're going to bring it down. Hold it up. Right on the center line. Might have to go on the grass a little bit. We'll see. Well, got it turned around on medium rate. So we'll put the flaps up. Flaps up. You can see that nose light shines up really well on this plane as well. So it's a uh, good looking bird overall. Plenty of detail. Let's take it back to the bench and look at the post-flight results. Flight review completed on the Freewing A10 Twin 80 millimeter. Let's talk about some of the flight and also an overview of the battery and a couple of things that you probably noticed during the flight. One is when you line it up on the center line, you want to make sure that you've got the nose lined up on the center line because just like the scale a10 it's got the nose gear offset to the right a little bit so if you line it up by that it'll be off to the left just a little bit not a big deal but just kind of something to keep in mind it has the same setup so it's offset just a little bit let's take a look at our battery percentage we were four and a half minutes on the throttle which we flew a couple minutes over that this plane, one thing I'll definitely tell y'all that stands out is the efficiency. This plane is very efficient when it comes to flight times. Forty-seven percent, three eight four and three eight five across the board on the back one, and on the other one. Forty-four percent, three eight four, three eight three across the board. So definitely good flight time. 
and you can stay up there for a while shoot touch and goes i mean it gives you a lot of opportunity to do different stuff two things that make that really possible upgraded power system and the high lift straight wing that it has you'll notice that when we came in on some of the landings it definitely sounds louder than it probably is because it's got the 5280RC whistles in the back. So that's something I tell you to be aware of. They sound really cool on the flybys and they give it a lot of sound and, you know, makes it, you know, sound scale coming through the sky even with the power off. That being said, when you're coming in on landing, you definitely want to make sure that you're aware of your power and your speed because it does make it sound like you're coming in much faster than you really are. On the landings, you notice we pulled the power back quite a bit, brought it in. Three good landings, the second one being the best of the three. When you have that pitch and power just right on this bird, because you don't want to fly it all the way in and just extend the glide path with the elevator and try to sit it down, because when it gets slow, it will sit down firm. Most of it's going to be absorbed in the front. The nose will try to bounce a little bit. However, if you have them just right, you can sit here, slide it onto the runway, and that nose will plant, and you'll have a scale landing. Something else I want to mention when we were talking about in the setup is three things I noticed after getting some flights on this bird about the factory setup. The CG, the down elevator they call for with the flaps, and also when you're using that factory CG where the weight is on the plane with the batteries. You'll see some people talk about the bucking bronco effect. You got to be careful because if you use those factory settings, it's going to happen and the reason why is there's those three things put a lot of pressure on the nose not only do you have the weight up there you have the elevator pushing the nose down and with the cg forward like that it puts all the weight up front so it puts even more pressure on that nose gear so those three things together is kind of what relates to that and those are still in the owner's manual that way and this model's been out for several years however once you get this plane set up right touch and go machine it flies really well, very efficient. It looks good. It's just a great airplane. You do need two batteries to run it at one time. So, you know, normally you get four flights out of four batteries. This one, you only get two flights out of four batteries. However, with the flight time that you get being basically, you know, almost two of what a normal jet would get, it definitely stands out. So I would definitely recommend this airplane. If you got any questions, feel free to throw it down in the comments. Also, you know, if there's anything that you've done to your plane that you like um, on the setup, feel free to share those down below as well. If you're not following the channel, go ahead and subscribe, push like, support us for today's video, and we'll see you on the next one.